Hi there. Welcome to our third episode of Brain Power Seminar. How to improve your brain power is something that uh, we all really want. And um, we're going to talk about the muddled mind. What really muddles our frontal lobe action in this next episode? We have looked at 10 times wiser in our first episode. And then the real mind in our second one. For our fourth one, we're going to look at the power crisis. Our brain needs a constant power supply, and we're going to look at what input do we need for that. And then the power supply to our brain uh, on the uh, first session, and then shaping your thoughts. Good cop, bad cop. And there we're going to look at the EFAs, the essential fatty acids that our brain really needs. And then your brain, satisfaction or slavery. Brain or belly, it's your choice. And once again, remind you, there's two things we don't want to touch, and that is our purse and our plate. But if you really want to fly like an eagle, you need to change some of those choices that we make. Your brain... Intimacy and seduction is another very important episode that you should not miss. We're also going to look at who is in charge in your brain. Who is in charge? And then the power of freedom. We've got such a warped idea of really what freedom is. And we're going to focus on that area in our second last episode. And our last one, renewing your mind, the cherry on the cake. Really, how to re renew your mind, looking at Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. A little bit more revision of our last episode. We have discovered that the crown of the brain is really seated in the frontal lobe. This is where our spirituality is seated. This is where our morality, our willpower, our motivation, our reasoning, our judgment is all placed here. It's the most sensitive part of the body. You could just imagine, and this is what this whole series is about. It's not, you know, te teaching techniques or memory enhancing techniques. It's really very simply looking at what physically can I do to my brain so that it would naturally just work more optimally without any effort from my side. So caring for it will make it work most optimally, naturally. There's a beautiful verse that I want to relay to you in Genesis, the first chapter, verse 29. Really God telling us how we should operate. It's like Henry Ford telling us in the handbook of the first for what oil should be put in, what fuel should be put in the tank so that this car would move, what would make this vehicle that God created move in the right direction? Well, God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. God was very clear on this. He gave us a specific instruction of what we should eat that would really make us excel rather than just stay where we are so used to stay. Now, some brain facts that we need to share today. The average human brain weighs around 1.36 kilograms. That's half the weight of your skin. Very interesting. 1.36 kilograms, half the weight of your skin. Very small organ. Very small in comparison to your whole body. Only 2% of your body weight. And then the most important part of this, where we're going to focus today, is the frontal lobe, the one-third part of this brain that's only 2% of the weight of the body. A compromised frontal lobe causes a muddled mind. If I would live the way that my, 
that, that, that my frontal lobe is compromised, I'm going to not think the way I should. I'm not going to act the way that I really should. And it is mainly caused by improper lifestyle. The way that I live, the way that I eat, the way that I drink is really going to compromise or uncompromise my frontal lobe action. With this episode, I would love to share 14 frontal lobe hits with you. If we would be able to avoid these hits, we naturally would just find us flying like eagles rather than scratching like chickens. Well, the first hit that we're going to look at on the frontal lobe is a lack of water. Now, I want to just mention that this episode, we're going to just run through the 14, and then we're going to unpack them as the episodes come from year onwards. So we're going to look at the lack of water and other hits. We're going to just share it with you, just sh share a little simple um, uh, outline to it, but we're going to go into depth in some of these and most of these frontal lobe hits so that we would understand this uh, most uh, th the best at the end of the series. Water and in and around the cell becomes concentrated when I don't have enough water. When I'm dehydrated, that area around the cell, now you can just imagine looking at the previous session, if the axon button comes together, connecting with the next neurotransmitter, there in that space there, that environment where there's chemical and electrical action, if the environment around it is going to change, that message is going to change. So this electrical char changes to and from the cell are affected by too little water in my, in my lifestyle. And that changes my behavior. I've many times seen two young kids really quarreling and fighting all the time. And many times they are dehydrated. Give them a glass of water and it seems like it just calms the mood. I've seen this in exam halls where, where a student needs a little bit of water and he would start relaying information much better. We need a good, good amount of water in our lifestyle every day. Hit number two, and it really is hitting us on the frontal lobe. It, um, it is a raised carbon dioxide level. This is a very important one, and we really look over this many times. Carbon dioxide makes the environment pH acid. We don't want that. We want this, this good environment in our cell um, area. You would feel sleepy, but your body is not going to feel as though, as, as though it had slept well if you would sleep in a room where all the windows and the doors are closed. You need some ventilation during the night, and then you would get up in the morning nice and fresh, rested, and feeling well. It's going to make you not think clearly if you have a raised carbon dioxide level in your system. You're going to make poor choices, and uh, your memory is not going to be as good as it should. It's going to change your behavior. Hit number three, very important hit that we should avoid, and that is poor blood flow in our system. Now, uh, things like sugar, and we're talking about, yeah, especially the refined sugars and oils and fats, they all cause your blood cells to be sticky. Wrong fats causes plaque, which hinders blood flow. And uh, we need good blood flow because our brain needs, number one, oxygen, and it needs glucose. Very, very important. And it should take away all the, all the unnecessary elements that we don't need there. That circulation is very, very important. If something is hindering it, I am not going to have the best action from my frontal lobe. It also makes the pH acid of my, of my brain cells more acid. Neurotransmitter messages change in that environment. We need a very specific acid level there. And this, this changes. Very often, 
become so subtle, we do foolish things and we don't even realize that we are doing them. Then we look at hit number four. We've got 14 of them, so let's look at number four. Hit number four is poor nutrition. Sometimes we have a whole table full of food, but we've got very, very little nutritional value in, in, those, in those foods that we have. So too much concentrated, too much refined food, plenty of food, but nutritionally there is famine. The production of neurotransmitters is blocked by this. And the structure of the neurotransmitters is changed. This changes the messages from the one cell to the other and could cause miscommunication. Um, it would change mood changes. It would cause, us, cause poor memory. It could even cause dementia. Let's look at hit number five. And if you would do yourself a favor, take note. Number one, number two, number three, number four. We now are number five. If you can avoid these hits, you would start flying as you would never think you could. Number five, hit number five is drugs. Now, when we look at drugs, it is legal and illegal drugs. You see, drugs, legal and illegal, makes you feel good. It does something to your, to your system. The neurotransmitter quality and quantity control is, is affected by this. It normally causes too much or too little neurotransmitter to be released, and that causes wrong messages at the end of the day. Let me pick up one or two of them. Marijuana, for instance, or caffeine. Well, you won't think that I would put that in the same category, but it is really, it needs to be put in the same category. You see, nicotine does the same thing. They change the neurotransmitter messages, and feelings are deceived. I get this feeling of, it's okay. I get this feeling of, yes, um, you know, I'm at peace. But really what happens in the cell is a different story. It also has the potential to permanently damage an unborn child's brain. Very important when you are pregnant, ladies, mommies, to be that you would not use any drugs, even legal drugs should very, very, you need to be very careful in using that. Now, let me lift up one that we would normally put in a category of, now this is not a drug. Coffee is a commonly accepted legal social drug. I want to make the statement that it is the drug of choice in South Africa. It is the early morning lift. Some people just cannot operate if they don't have some coffee, some caffeine in their, in their morning uh, first thing that they do in the morning. Well, let's look at the effect of this drug. Caffeine. Let's look at this, this drug. Caffeine does cause dependency. We need to know that it causes withdrawal symptoms if I would stop using it. It uh, impairs physical and mental performance. You are affected by using this, this legal drug. It interferes with sleep. Uh, I found many people don't sleep, and they don't get that real stage three and four um, stages of the, of the sleeping pattern at night. Others really do go and sleep with it. That is something very interesting. It does even impact on your character, your spiritual and social uh, side of that. Now, when I mention these things, we could really prove this with science today. It's so remarkable that we have and we see an effect in the research on these different areas. It dehydrates the body. If you would have one cup of coffee, you at least need five cups of water to rectify just the, the, the hydration levels that would, be, that would be out. It also damages neurotransmitter receptors. It causes weaker messages. There needs to be good communication in the cells. Caffeine causes weaker messages. Now, let me explain this to you in, in, in more detail. Adenosine is a brain chemical that acts like 
the brakes of a car. Now, I want to ask the question, does a car need brakes? Will you drive a car without brakes? Well, I would not. It would be most dangerous to do that. Well, the problem is, the moment I use caffeine in my diet, it actually overrides my brain's brakes. That is adenosine. You see, it, you know, adenosine balances the break that the brain transmitters. It keeps them in the comfort zone. The moment I use caffeine, it disables those breaks. And the side effects of it is anxiety, anxiety neurosis, psychosis, where I actually lose touch of reality. It could even lead to schizophrenia. Now, this is serious. It means that if my cells say, I'm tired, and the message goes and re it's, it's relayed, adenosine relays that message to the body, it means go and sleep, go and have a rest. Now I have a cup of coffee, and it overrides and says, no, no, you're not tired, you can go on. The fact is, your cells are tired, and they're going to get damaged when I override them. And this is what this legal drug does. It overrides that. There's a study done in Norway. Uh, they call it the, the caffeine nurses study. And they found that there's a significant increase in depression and stress management in women who were coffee drinkers. Very profound is they found their blood oxygen levels down by 60%. You need to know that 25% of the oxygen that you take in while you breathe goes to your brain. So one quarter of what you breathe goes to the brain. If I use caffeine, it means that there's 60% lower oxygen that goes to my brain. This is why we, we have such a big problem with this legal drug. The brain goes to great measures to counteract the effect of, of this caffeine. It also decreases the sleep stages three and four that restore our brain for the, for the new day. So I'm not going to feel that good in the morning when I wake up if I on a, a lifestyle where I use caffeine. I will live a half-baked life. You know what? I really do know the difference today after my experience with cancer, what it is to live to the fullest rather than in comparison with living a half-baked life. It's really a big difference. It also disrupts complex motor tasks. We need to know that this legal drug changes our reaction time. Our fine motor coordination is influenced by, by this. And contrary to what many people believe, there's no evidence to date that caffeine improves intellectual ability. Some people say, you have a cup of coffee, then I, just, I can just you know, memorize better. There is no fact to that. There's a very interesting statement made by my favorite writer. And I want to take you to the screen that says, Coffee is a hurtful indulgence. It temporarily excites the mind. But the after effect is exhaustion, prostration, paralysis of the mental, moral, and physical powers. The mind becomes enervated, and unless through determined effort the habit is overcome, the activity of the brain is permanently lessened. Now, that is profound. And I want you to just notice when this was written. This is written in 1890. As we are far from there, have we not learned from this? Let me give you a very specific example. On the screen, you can see a little spider. Well, what the scientists did, they gave this little spider the equivalent of two spider cups of coffee. Now, I'm saying spider cups because, you know, if you would give a spider two cups of coffee, it would die immediately. So it weighed, they weighed the weight of a man, they weighed, you know, the spider, and they made, they made this calculation to give them the equivalent of spider cups, two cups of coffee. 
after they gave the spider the 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 um, the caffeine, the cups of coffee, there it did its job. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's a beautiful mess. The poor little creature could really not accomplish what God created it to do. Well, 48 hours later, it's really trying its best, but really not there at all. You can see all the little web lines are skew. This guy really is not there. And then only 96 hours later is he back on track to do whatever he's created to do perfectly. Beautiful, perfect spider web. Guys, I need you to know that we have a responsibility when it comes to what we eat and what we drink and how we do things. I want us to go to eat number six. And that is um, sexual arousal outside of marriage and a marriage relationship. We're going to go to hit number seven now, and that is hypnosis. And once again, in one of our uh, future episodes, we're going to really unpack this whole thing about hypnosis. And then hit number eight. Hit number eight is a lack of abstract thinking. Big problem in our society. You know, we don't think anymore. We, we are fed information. We sit in front of television. Um, we, do, we do various things. Our cell phones. You know, we are decided for. There's no abstract thinking. We don't think anymore. We, we, we don't do mass and the sum by calculating. We use a calculator, our cell phone calculator. Um, a lack of abstract thinking does compromise our frontal lobe. And we actually see early onset of age when we don't do this abstract thinking thing. Hit number nine. That is going against your conscience. If you know something is wrong, but you still go and do it against your conscience, that is a frontal lobe hit. That would compromise your frontal lobe. Hit number ten. Very important one. And that is a low-carbohydrate diet. You've heard it. It's been said so many times. Low-carb, low-carb diet. This is what you need to really, you know, get into that shape. Well, people, we know that carbohydrates are brain food. If you don't have carbohydrates in your diet, you are starving your brain. Carbohydrates need to be unrefined for, brain, for the brain to work optimally. So we sometimes have a lot of carbohydrates, and this is the carbohydrates that we should be warned about. This, you know, this white carbohydrates, where all the good nutritional values are taken out. We're left with really not something that the brain can feed on. Then we need to go and look at number 11, hit number 11, and that is television. Now, I know I'm not very popular when I start saying this, but uh, we're going to look at television being and having a semi-hypnotic effect on us. We're going to unpack this in some of the episodes uh, that comes in the future. Then hit number 12, music. Music is really a big issue today. It causes our frontal lobe to be compromised in the sense that it bypasses the control of reason and it goes straight to the limbic system where we start acting on the beat, on the rhythm of the music instead of cognitively controlling it by our, by our thoughts. We're going to unpack this in the future. And then number 13, and that is cell phones. Well, I could never put this one in uh, before uh, about a year ago when uh, the research has shown that cell phones are really a big problem. I want you to know that this is a frontal lobe hit. It has a lot of physical risks involved, but also it distracts us from really being in what really should be in control. Then we go to the last hit, number 14. 
There's more than 21, but we are focusing only on these 14 in this series. And uh, hit number 14 is a lack of scriptural study. Very interesting one. And we do have scientific uh, proof to show that this is really true. Well, this statement says, Nothing is so calculated to enlarge the mind and strengthen the intellect as the study of the Bible. No other study will so ev elevate the soul and give vigor to the faculties as the study of the living oracles. There's a big difference here between a good, healthy frontal lobe and one that's compromised. And you can see it on this picture. You can see there's a difference between the frontal lobe area and the rest of the brain. This is a visible frontotemporal degeneration that you see here. There's a look after and a look not after brain on our screen. People, I physically could enhance my brain action and the way I think, the way I live, by caring for my brain, for f of feeding it the right food, of doing what it should do. The bottom line, our pet little habits give us a very short-term good feeling at a great risk. They are robbing you of something very awesome, and that is who you really are. You change by the things that you do. God wants to restore your mind in you. Give him an opportunity to do that. I want to remind you of Romans 12, verse 2. And we're going we're gonna to unpack this in our later episode. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind in order to prove by you what is it that is good and pleasing and what is the perfect will of God. In the sessions to come, I'm going to share with you the characteristics of a new mind. And the question is, do you want to have a new mind? May God bless you as you make good decisions to fly rather than to scratch. Until we see you next time, may you be blessed. See you then.